Hi there, welcome to the guide. I'm so glad you're here and I'm excited to share this information with you. Let's begin at the beginning. Darkness. In the absence of light, the world disappears. As visual artists, light is the origin of our magic. It brings the world into visual existence. You may think of yourself as an oil painter or a digital artist, but your medium, your real language, is light. You create images with light effects, the way a conductor brings music alive with instruments. In this guide, we will explore together the structure of this visual music. Here is what's on the menu. We will begin with the foundations. That means what light is, how light works, and how to separate light from shadow. Next, you will learn to create realism by understanding 12 different light effects. The third topic is inventing light. Here, you will receive a powerful tool. It will serve you when you're working from imagination, and also when you're working from life, from observation. We will finish the lesson with the master key to unlock these three domains. I hope that sounds like a worthwhile adventure. Let's dive in. Do you know what light is? I think we all know superficially, but nobody really knows, nobody fully understands what light is and why light exists. But we have a few ways of describing light that are useful for us as image makers. Light is energy. To be specific, it is electromagnetic energy. We won't really go into physics here, but this is the same type of energy as gamma rays, x-rays, microwaves, and radio waves. What we call light happens to be the particular range of electromagnetic energy that our eyes and brain evolved to perceive as brightness and color. For our purposes, we will think of light as light rays. A light ray originates from a source, it then travels in a straight line, and when it hits a surface, it is reflected. This is how light creates the world around you. When you draw a portrait, you might think that you're drawing an eye or a nose. But what you're actually doing is drawing the effect of light on these forms that we call noses and eyes. So there's a reason behind everything you see on the model. And these reasons can be understood. That's precisely what this guide is about. The fundamental distinction we make at the beginning is the distinction between light and shadow. You can think of this as two countries, the country of light and the country of shadow. I realize this sounds like the beginning of a bad fantasy novel, Please bear with me. There's a border separating these two countries. Unfortunately, there are many different names people use for this border. Some call it shadow line or shadow edge. Some call it bedbug line. And some even call it core shadow, which is a good approximation, but not quite accurate. I personally really like the word terminator. This is what astronomers call the dividing line on a planet between the dark side and the illuminated side. I like the word terminator because it reminds me that the light terminates at some point on the surface. Let me show you what I mean. Let's move the camera so that we can see what the light can see. You might notice that there's no shadow on this head right now. 
that's because what the light sees is, by definition, illuminated. It is in light. We are now looking at the lit side of this head. If we leave the light at the same position, but move the camera a little bit to the side, we can see the shadow again. This means that the terminator marks the boundary of the area that the light sees. What the light can't see is what falls into shadow. For any given light source, there is no ambiguity. Either something is in light or it's in shadow. Let's look at this drawing again. I don't know if you like this drawing or not, but I hope you agree that the sense of light and the sense of form are working fairly well. This is because I chose to pay close attention to finding the terminator and maintaining a clear separation between light and shadow. Once this first step was achieved, I was able to systematically take the drawing further by using more advanced light effects. Are you ready to learn how to do this? Well, boys and girls, tighten your seatbelts because we're about to go deep. May I introduce to you the sphere? It will help us to create realism by understanding light effects. Since we were just talking about the Terminator, can you find it on the sphere? It's right here, separating light and shadow. The part of an object that is in light is called form light, whereas the part of an object that's in shadow is called form shadow. It's very useful to distinguish between the form shadow and the cast shadow. The form shadow is part of the object you're drawing, but the cast shadow is the result of a projection. Light is hitting the sphere and projecting the cast shadow onto the floor. By the way, did you know that the shape of the cast shadow is created by the shape of the terminator line? That's pretty cool and pretty nerdy, but you came here to learn, so I'm giving you everything I know. All right. These are the four basic light effects that allow us to separate light and shadow. There's form light and form shadow, and there's the terminator, which separates the two and projects the cast shadow. You can do a lot with these four, and it's important that you understand them. So let's put this into practice. We're going to draw a few eggs. If you're intimidated, you can relax. It's going to be very simple and it will take less than two minutes. You can absolutely do this. You need two things, a piece of paper and a pencil. Any paper is okay. If you have an eraser, you can add it, but it's not necessary. Press pause now and get a pencil and a piece of paper. Wait, are you still just sitting there? Maybe you have to trick yourself into drawing. Maybe you won't draw just yet, but you can at least get a pencil, right? Do it now. All right, wonderful. I will draw a few ovals on this sheet of paper. You can follow along. Keep your hand relaxed and try to draw each oval in a soft, continuous movement. Do maybe four or five. Then let's divide each of these eggs into light and shadow by drawing a terminator ellipse. Again, stay soft and relaxed. Don't worry about where the terminator goes exactly. We will take a look at that the next time we draw. All right, now we tone in half of each egg with shadow. Pick one half, it doesn't matter which one. As I said, this is simple. Don't underestimate the power of simplicity. Understand that you build strong foundations from mastering simple skills. All right, now to finish it up, let's draw cast shadows. Just estimate where they go for now. There's no need to construct them. I 
um, estimating roughly the light direction, drawing a cast shadow, and then filling in the cast shadow. That's it! Here's our first page of simple eggs separating light and shadow with form light, form shadow, the terminator, and cast shadow. If you want, you can do a few more drawings of objects on a table in front of you. Focus on finding the terminator and separating light and shadow. 